Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkled Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas. And uh, Mrs. Donut has put it upon me to make her a pan hanging rack or a pot rack to mount under a cabinet. And uh, before you go thinking, oh, this guy is fixing to do something I can't do, well, let me show you the sad result of coming home tired, putting one together upside down. See those poorly set rivets? Those hooks should have been hanging down. <laughs> yes, I was too tired to be messing with blacksmithing. So anyway, this is going to get recreated into stuff. Uh, recently, I had a, a beginning smith come to my smithy and learn a little bit about how to operate a coal forge. I turned him loose, told him very little, just the basics, and he did very well. Uh, Nick Duncan excellent human being I hope he comes back and he picked right up on it but anyway he brought some steel that's 5 8 round I got 24 inches of it cut here and I've got four 3 inch pieces cut here these are going to be the hooks and instead of punching holes in the bar I'm gonna make the hooks to loop around the bar to where they can actually be moved a little bit around to shift things and I'm gonna put a step in here to where it'll hang under the cabinet with bolts and big fender washers. So I'm gonna let you watch me do this and uh, we'll go from there. Let's get some steel hot. See you in a minute. Okay, the first thing I gotta do is take the end of the bar and set it over the anvil and create an offset using the edge of the anvil and the hammer half on, half off. They call that half face blows. And I want to flatten a portion two inches long. So I've made a chalk line across my anvil. The reason I've made the chalk line so long is because in the course of hammering on things, you tend to obliterate your chalk mark. So I have a lot of different areas to use it. All I have to do is do this twice, once on each end of the bar. Then I'll show you what to do next. So let me pull the bar out and we'll proceed. Bar, now rod rod. Alright, steel's hot. Line it up, half face blows. Flatten it out. Straighten the equation. Use the flat side of the hammer. More control blows. <coughs> you see? Creates that offset at a uniform two inches. Still want to leave this meaty because these are cast iron skillets that are going to be hanging from this. So uh, while I'm working on this end and it's hot and this end's cold enough to hold, I'm going to go ahead and punch a small hole. So I'm going to heat it up and we'll punch the hole. Do the same to the other side and then I'll get back with you. But I'll let you see me punch the one hole. See you in a minute. Alright, let's punch us about a quarter inch hole through there. Chain over the anvil helps things from jumping a little bit. Not a proper hole fast, but it'll work a little bit. Go you punch.
flip it over. <coughs> Try to punch this hole out without getting hit in the nuts. Go on the wood stump. Try to knock the slug out. Do it over the pretzel hole. Do your punch. Slugs out. One heat, one hole. That's your goal. It might take you three, four, five heats. Whatever it takes for you to punch your holes. You learn over time. You get quicker at it. Notice I hit my hand one time, but I felt myself missing and held back so my hand's not hurt. These are things you learn with practice. And there's your nice clean hole, no rag. What I did was I punched the hole enough to where I could see the impression of the hole on the back. And when I flipped it over, found myself an angle for a flat spot and I aimed for the center of that impression that was made. The impression is going to be larger than the hole you're punching but it'll give you a bullseye and you just aim for the middle of that bullseye and try to push the portion you've compressed from the other side back down. Once you get that slug to move into the slot that you punched on the other side then you can knock it out. The wood block is a good thing for that. Uh, James over at County Line Forge, Ting Ting, taught me about the wood block, and I've been using it ever since. So, <clears throat> you've seen what I've done to this bar. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other end. And uh, I'll get back with you. We'll see you in a minute. Alright, here's the other end. Matched to the end I did before. Or close enough. So you see you've created an offset. You step down. You're not going to bend it this way. You're going to bend it that way. So the more material is up here, when you bend that, it'll be more natural for the metal to move in that position. So what I'm going to do is heat this up, get some of the bend in the hardy hole, and work over the side and top of the handle in this fashion and bend it 90 degrees so we'll do that i'll heat it up we'll get back to it see you in a minute all right let's put a 90 on it first thing i'm going to do is line this up and bend some of it in the hardy hole help myself out a little bit now work on the side and top of the anvil There we go. It's not quite 90 degrees. That's better. Did you see that's hole through it for mounting? You've been at 90 degrees. Now you need to do that again. The next step, I'm going to heat this up and get it really hot. And lock this in the vice jaws and then bend this bar over this way. To where it creates that little Z shape. And uh, we'll do that and I'll do the same to the other end. See you in a minute. Okay, I don't need a lot of drop from the cabinet to allow the hooks to slide. So I'm just going to rest that 90 on the bottom of this vice jaw 
and bend it over and whack on it a little bit. So let's do that. I'm sparing you all the heat so that way you can just see the action. See it curves above. blacksmiths have a post vise that goes to the ground. This one was given to me by James over at County Line Forge. Bless him. Hell of a good guy. If you're not subscribed, I'll share the link in the description of this video. And you should subscribe to him. He does live streams. They're a lot of fun. And he's a lot of fun anyway. I've hung out with him in person. Anyway, there's our little Z all set. We're going to do the same thing to the other end and I'll get back with you and the bar will be done. I'll show you the done bar and we'll start working on one of the hooks. I'm not going to have you sit through making all four of the hooks. We'll make one, you'll see, I'll make them all match. And we'll get back with it in the end when it's time to put the hooks on. See you in a minute. Well, here's the bar. The bar is finished. If your goal is just to make a bar like this for utility purposes, well, you're already done. What we're going to do is we're going to hang this on the bottom of the cabinet through the two holes we uh, punched and uh, put large washers to prevent it from pulling through the weak cabinet in that trailer. I'm putting it in and um, we're going to have some hooks that go around here that will slide. That's why I left this bar, this rod, nice and smooth these glasses drive me crazy anyway this part's done next thing we've got to do or that I'm going to do rather is take this 3 inch piece of 5 8 round stock and I'm going to put about 50% of it about half of it over the edge of the anvil and I'm going to draw that into a hoop that will wrap around the bar the other 50% I'm going to draw into a hook that will engage the um, eye in the cast iron frying pan handle. So I'm going to show you that. We're going to make one of these and I'll finish it and I'll show you the finished product. So let's get this in the fire. I'm going to use some handy dandy bolt jaw tongs made from hoof nippers to grab this round stock and hold it during the process. So let's get it hot and we'll see you in a minute. Let's work on that. Half on, half off. Square. Keep it as square as possible. It's going to trapezoid a little bit on you sometimes. That's where you use the round side of your hammer. To push and pull the metal. <clears throat> See, we're getting square. Heat it up. See you in a minute.
rock forge. More heat. eat. Draw out square, then octagon, then round. Don't try pinching in on the end of your material or it'll create a divot, which will make a cold shut when the ends come together. Push from the bigger part of the stock out. And you can push and pull with the hammer to correct the way the metal is moving or heat. Now the 90 turn. the corners down well that end is still suitable to grab with these bolt jaw tongs I'm gonna flip it around and correct all the mess I made get that all ironed out more heat
More heat. Here's what we started with. Pizza 5 eighths round. We're getting somewhere. Heat her up. And it's trying to split. More heat. Flip it around. Drop forge. Getting longer. From this piece of 5 eighths to that. I need about two more inches on it. I'm going to take that out of the middle. Push it this way. Heat up this part. More heat. See you in a minute.
them out about three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna take it out of the middle. More heat, see you in a minute. Them corners down. Check length with my other stock. Well, that gained me about a quarter of an inch. See you in a minute. Straighten her up and check length. A little plainish thing. I'm using the flat side of the hammer, knocking some lumps down. It took me a long time to get used to the flat side of the hammer. But then when I realized it's for a more controlled blow, um, I started utilizing that. Just like the whole anvil is a tool, both ends of the hammer are a tool. Let's check length. Okay, I lack about a quarter of an inch. What I need to do is taper one end down to be the hook. And uh, the end that needs the most work is going to get to be that end. This end. So I'm going to work on it with a lighter hammer and uh, lower heats and kind of planish that out and narrow it and make it more refined to hook into the eye of the skillet. See you in a minute. Let's planish this out. my heat in the tip. I'll finish this part. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they're getting into blacksmithing is they're trying to work at too low a heat. Know if it's a planishing heat or if it's forging heat. Planishing is, uh, I've mentioned it before in a lot of my videos, planishing is knocking the lumps down and kind of refining the surface condition of your piece and getting it a little more uh, smooth, suited to its purpose. Okay, gone down to a black heat now, time to heat the tip up. Try to isolate the heat to the tip and work quickly with it because the cold anvil is a heat sink and it's gonna suck the heat away. So I'm going to try to take this flat and turn it into a tapered round. See you in a minute. All right, heat's good for forging.
a one and two sharp because we're not going to roll the end of this hook. We're just going to make a hook out of it. A little roll would catch on pans. It wouldn't be great. Bear in mind the area that's going to be the throat of the hook. And make sure it's smooth enough to receive the thing you're going to be hanging on it. Put a little more heat back here, I'll work with that. Try to get it straight. Heat's gone. Let me check. It's great. It's perfect exactly what I need it to be. We'll show rolling a hook over and then we're going to uh, show you attaching the hook to the bar and uh, in between that I'm going to go ahead and make all these match. So we'll see you in a minute. Get a grip. Got to see the work on the horn. Length is good, needs a little bit more tip up. That's good. Look down it and make sure that it aligns with the shaft. That's great. So here's the first hook I made for a control versus the second hook. There's a little bit of length difference, but they will work and look symmetrical. Alright, next thing we'll do is we'll heat up the other end of this and uh, roll it around to join it onto the bar. So let's heat this up. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, we'll bend that little hook over. The one that goes over the bar. That looks about close enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two pairs of tongs, this one and the other, heat that up and bend it to the side, put it over the bar, and then bend it back straight, and then clench it. So we'll do that. We'll see you in a minute.
That'll work. Need to make one face in the other way. See you in a minute. Well, here it is. Here's the pot rack the the missus requested. That little hole. These will move around. I'm going to put some big fender washers inside the cabinet I'm hanging it under and uh, prevent it from pulling through. Anyway, I think she can hang them four cast iron skillets on this pretty good. Uh, they just needed to function. These are, as you have seen, pieces of this 5 8 round that have been drawn out he started as three inches of material so I hope this lended you some uh, inspiration and I hope you glean something from this and uh, I'll try to keep my videos more frequent although this one took me nearly two weeks to make and a uh, month old promise I'll keep it coming well that's all I got for today so until next time bye